Fortune 4 Fortune 4 How's it going, Russell Randers, and welcome back to Russell Rand edition number 38. Yes, there has been 38 editions. I'm surprised I made it this far as well. And I am your host, Bleacher Report, featured columnist level 2, Graham G.S. and Matthews, here today for another monumental, epic, episodic edition of Russell Rand for you, here today to discuss Monday Night Raw and everything else going on in the world of wrestling leading up to the astounded WrestleMania 28 in only less than three weeks. I am super excited. I could not be any more excited for WrestleMania than I am right now. So, now, as I just said, to kick off Raw, we had John Cena return basic thugonomics, which got a huge markout reaction from me, and I thought that was amazing. I mean, his rap was okay. I didn't think it was off the charts. It wasn't terrible, but I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, he got a few shots in there. He said bitch at one No, he didn't say bitch. I mean, he might have, but he did say shit at one point, which got, ended up getting sense of that, which I thought was pretty cool. Acting a little edgy there from John Cena. That's something that you usually see in the opening time slot from Monday Night Raw. So I thought that promo was pretty cool. I mean, he was dressed like a tool. Like, I mean, he hasn't dressed like that since, what, 2005? I mean, it, it looked toolish since he hasn't worn it since then. It doesn't fit his personality anymore. But I did, I did think that it was a pretty cool throwback to all the fans of basic thugonomics and everything like that in the past couple of years that I've always wanted to see it back. And you got your wish, as well as mine, that basic thugonomics was brought back for one night only. And that also tied into the ending segment with The Rock in The Rock concert, which I thought was also pretty good. I mean, The Rock wasn't nailing his lines. His He was reading the lyrics to his song, if you want to call it a song, on the lyric sheet. And when he was singing We Will Rock You, all of his lyrics to the song were on the Titan Tron, and even then he was just flubbing words up and down just the entire song. So I thought that was a little, you know, less than organized. But other than that, I loved The Rock's concert. It was hilarious. And I mean, I didn't see the first concert. Just shoot me now. I know I'm not a wrestling fan if I don't see his first concert from 2003 when he was in Stone Cold and Goldberg and all those good rivalries. But uh, I thought this was pretty well done. And since they've had a couple of intense segments over the last couple of weeks between Cena and Rock, I think it would have been repetitive to do the same exact thing this week. So it was a nice break from the usual, you know, serious tone that Cena and Rock provide with the WWE Raw Universe. So maybe next week they go back to being serious and further building towards WrestleMania 28. So also on our first match on the show, we had FCW former stars Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler. Now this is an excellent match. These guys have excellent chemistry, and I'm really glad they got this amount of uh, this significant amount of time. They had a really good match. I think it was last week on SmackDown, so I am glad they are they had a rematch on Raw that got a significant amount of time. I mean it was inevitable that uh Sheamus would be going over. But I mean he's challenging for the World Heavyweight Championship WrestleMania, so he needs to go over. Whereas Dolph Ziggler doesn't even have a match at the show as of right now. So as far as that goes, I thought this was very well done. Excellent match. It went on longer than it really everyone predicted. So excellent match here, as well as bonus points for having Daniel Bryan in the uh, in the box in the box seats up top with AJ. Those guys are a hilarious couple. Telling AJ to shut up last week that was just LOL funny. And I just love those guys as a couple. I don't. I wouldn't say that she's next to Elizabeth. Elizabeth to uh, Daniel Bryan's Macho Man Randy Savage. But it certainly is looking that way, and I really love the pairing between Daniel Bryan and AJ. So moving on, we had another uh, progression of the John Laurinaitis and Teddy Long rivalry that we've been building towards since Elimination Chamber. Um, and this progression included Mark Henry and uh, David Otenga, or David Otunga. I like to say David Otenga. I, I recently heard someone refer to him as that on the review, so I just love saying his name that way. I uh, defeat the newly crowned United States champion from last week, Santino Morello, in a handicap match. And this match was obviously nothing special, but it was simple and effective. I don't hate the storyline as much as I did before, because it makes sense if you think about it. I'd much rather have just one GM just merge the brands, get it out of the way, just get rid of the draft. As much as I love the draft, get rid of it. They don't need it. So having Mark Henry on team, uh, team Teddy, I'm sorry, team John Laurinaitis, 
It was very well done. And at least he's going to be having something to do come WrestleMania 28. Because originally I didn't think Mark Henry was going to be making the card because he's been jobbing the last couple of weeks. So establishing, or re-establishing, I should say, him as a monster heel was very, very, very well done. I'm glad he's going to be able to make it to WrestleMania. We all, it also looks apparent that uh, Kofi Kingston and R-Truth are going to be on Team Teddy as well. Uh, as well as Santino leading the team. I mean, I don't like the concept of Santino and David Otunga leading the teams. These guys mean nothing. I just do not like these guys as much as some people would, I, I guess. I don't know. But um, at least they have some more establishing members. Hopefully they add Christian to the mix in the next couple of weeks. Del Rio. Uh, maybe a returning Rey Mysterio. Maybe a returning Evan Bourne. Who knows? Evan Bourne will be returning in three days, actually, on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. So look out for that. Um, in the middle of the show, we had The Undertaker versus Shawn... No, I'm sorry, not versus, but confronted Shawn Michaels. Very solid promo between these two. Always bring the intensity, and they delivered very, very well. Um, these guys haven't talked all, through that, uh, I'm sorry, talked all that too much in the last couple of years. On television, that is. Um, they had a confrontation last year. That didn't go over... I mean, that wasn't didn't run too long when they had Triple H added in the mix. So I think the last one-on-one -on -one confrontation they had between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, I think was last night, was the night after WrestleMania 26 when Shawn Michaels was retiring. But anyway, this promo is very well done. I am really, really looking forward to this match because no more than two, three months ago, I was very down on the idea of Shawn Michaels, I'm sorry, ver uh, Triple H versus Undertaker, WrestleMania 28. I did not want to see that again. When you factor in Shawn Michaels going to be there and uh, the Hell in the Cell aspect of it, I think this could be an amazing match on WrestleMania Classic. So hopefully it does get booked well. And the fact that Shawn Michaels uh, could possibly turn either way. They show the dissension there. And Triple H's DX chop at the end of it. Mm, it's beautiful. I love that. Very nice click I'm sorry, cliffhanger and teaser going to WrestleMania 28. I'm really highly intrigued by this feud going into the show of shows. Really looking forward to the match and the, how the storyline progresses next week when all three confront each other on Monday Night Raw. So then after that, we had uh, CM Punk, The Miz, James Roday, and Jericho all combined into one segment. I was really, really looking forward to James Roday on Monday Night Raw, and I was super excited to see him on Raw. He, he played his well, I'm sorry, he played his role very well, I should say. Um, unlike most uh, guest hosts on Monday Night Raw, he is actually a wrestling fan. So I was kind of excited to see him on the show, seeing how I am also a huge fan of Psych. And just keeping him short and sweet, just with the introductions and his chemistry with Miz, very well done. So I love that. If anyone missed that, huge James Roday fan. So I'm really glad he got to make up that appearance that he missed from 2010. Um, CM Punk versus Miz, great match. Those guys have great chemistry. Um, um, this is a feud that I've always wanted to see, Punk versus Miz, but they've never been able to get to it. I don't know what they're going to be doing now, and since Miz lost, he's still not on Team Laurinaitis come WrestleMania. So I do think that he might be turning face in the near, very near future. I mean, I said this maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, turn Miz face, turn Miz face, turn Miz face. And they have yet to do it. He has nothing to do. Just book the turn. I will be talking about his involvement at WrestleMania. Um, including the John Cena Rock match. I'll get to that in a little bit. But a uh, very good match. No surprise that Punk won, but very well wrestled match. And, uh, sorry, nonetheless. So we had Chris Jericho uh, talk to CM Punk right after the match regarding his father and add more fire, I'm sorry, add more fuel to the fire of this feud between best in the world versus best in the world, claiming that his father was a drunk. And I got to give bonus points to CM Punk for showing vulnerability during that promo when he appeared to be Sad from what uh, Jericho said regarding his father. So very well done. And uh, I mean, I wasn't extremely intrigued by this because I guess this did happen before in Ring of Honor. I mean, I wouldn't know. I never watched anything Ring of Honor related before. But um, at least it adds an extra layer into this feud going into WrestleMania and hopefully gives it more meaning so it's not just an afterthought going into WrestleMania underneath Michaels and Taker and Triple H and The Rock and John Cena and all that good stuff. So also, we also witnessed another return on Monday Night Raw, featuring the return of Brodus Clay, the Funkasaurus Brodus Clay, who we haven't seen since the Royal Rumble, I believe. Um, short, sweet, nothing really changed since the last time he's been on Monday Night Raw, but I'm not going to go down on his gimmick. I am liking him as a face, but uh, he did play his role well, 
nothing different than the typical squash match we see from him, but hopefully he gets longer matches in a decent feud during WrestleMania. I mean, why return Brodus Clay if they're not going to be featuring him at WrestleMania? Maybe he's going to be in Team Teddy. Who knows? So hopefully that shapes up to be some kind of angle in the next couple of weeks. And also on this show, we also had Orton versus Swagger. Really nothing to say here. It was kind of a meaningless match, but it was good action. I have to admit that. These guys have good chemistry. Orton was going to win, of course, and Jack Swagger hasn't meant anything in a long time, especially after that uh, forgettable United States Championship run that he just had a number of weeks ago. So I do like that. I was a little confused that they didn't show Kane on the show, but I guess we'll get some more from that on SmackDown. So that's it for this week's Monday Night Raw. I think that was a fantastic episode. The best episode since the Aftermath show of the Royal Rumble. I'm sorry, um, since the Elimination Chamber post-show. That was a very good show, too. This show covered everything on the WrestleMania card, for the most part. Everything got great hype, great segments, great matches. Loved everything about the show, and hopefully they can keep it up in the next two weeks, and they don't bring it down to a shitty level, even though the ratings aren't re reflecting the success they're having on television. So moving on, as I was saying before, The Miz at WrestleMania. What role is he going to play? Well, there were a few reports surfacing just yesterday and over the last couple of days saying that The Miz is going to be at WrestleMania in some capacity. In this capacity, it's going to be in the John Cena and The Rock match. Now, I see how this makes somewhat sense since he was in the match between The Rock and John Cena last year when he faced John Cena and successfully defended his WWE Championship against him in the main event of the uh, show of shows. So I see how that makes sense. But he hasn't been doing anything since December. So I really don't see the point in having him interfere, especially if he doesn't mean anything. And he hasn't won a match in three months. So hopefully they do get him on the card somehow. I, as I just said, turn him face, get him on the card, have him join Dean Teddy, and just do it that way. I think that would be the best bet. And hopefully it turns out to be something good. I heard it would be a, a huge surprise, apparently, regarding the involvement of The Miz at, at WrestleMania. So hopefully it turns out to be something worthy. And it just, I don't know, I just really want to see Miz in the card. I believe he deserves it, in my opinion. So that does it for this week's Wrestle Rant. Now time for my shameless plugs. You guys can visit my website at nextairwrestling.weebly.com for all the WWE, TNA, rumors, recaps, and more. And also, speaking of NEW, um, you guys, if you guys go check out the website, I, re I recently revamped it a little bit with adding some new information. So go check out the archives and the superstars recently updated it. So go check that out. And also at the bottom of the site, there is a new poll regarding my next dance video. Now, I won't be posting a dance video this week. It won't be coming next week. It will instead be coming, um, I believe, Monday the 26th of March. So you got to wait until then. If you guys are fans of the videos, you're going to have to wait until then to watch the next one. I will be uh, – I've already filmed a whole bunch of them. They'll just be published on that day. Um, I'm going to be doing one every day of that week entitled March Madness, you know, to tie in the theme of this month. So look out for that, and if you want to see me dance my next song, go vote on nextdayrestling.wb.com for your choice on which song I should dance to next. So also, you guys can check me out on Bleacher Report, Graham G.S. and Matthews. I just recently brought back Push to Punish. I had excellent reviews from a lot of people, so thank you guys so much for reading. I really do appreciate it. And my next edition comes this Saturday. There will be a new edition every Saturday until the uh, April 14th, I believe, and I'll be doing a special article that day. So this Saturday, I do Teddy Biasi. Go check that out. Spoilers. This Thursday, Ben Gartland will again not be on the show. He is out on a personal vacation. I will instead be having two guests on the show this week. So tune in this Thursday night, 6.35, 30 central time at blogtalkradio.com slash spoilers podcast for the latest show and everything on our thoughts and pro wrestling and more. Um, also, make sure not to – don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I just recently surpassed 50 subscribers. I'm now at 56. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And uh, also, reaching milestones, thank you guys for helping me reach 1,000 followers last Friday night. I really do appreciate it. I've been building towards that for a while. So hopefully we can keep on building and whatnot. So you guys can follow me at save underscore us underscore gsm at twitter.com. So go check all my tweets out and all that good stuff. So again, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully you guys have an awesome, awesome week. And enjoy everything wrestling related going to WrestleMania 28. So have an amazing week, guys. This is GSM signing out. Till next time.